We've seen a huge increase in the pace of activity in commercial space in the last few years. Just as an example, in fiscal year FY12, we had a grand total of three licensed or permitted launches. In FY13, that increased by 500 percent, up to 18 launches. And last year, we had 19 licensed or permitted launches. So it's really growing. In terms of spaceports, we're now up to 10 FAA licensed spaceports. Each of those are a little bit different, but certainly a, a lot of interest in communities and how can they get in on the action. And we're doing our best to try to increase our efficiency in processing applications and in conducting our inspections. We're also having conversations with the Congress on what kind of resources will be required if this activity level continues to increase going forward. If you look at the spaceports that are in place today, and there are 10 FAA licensed spaceports right now, each is a little bit different, and it really depends on what kind of operations they would like to host. We've got the classic spaceports at Cape Canaveral and at Brandenburg Air Force Base, where you've got a gantry and a launch pad, and you're typically launching the rocket out over the water. But you've got other kinds, too. More recently, we've added a number of spaceports that look more like airports. They have runways, they have hangars to process the vehicles, and they're intended to service horizontal landing and takeoff vehicles that are increasingly of interest in reusable launch vehicle systems. So when we get an application from a particular spaceport entity, then oftentimes we will talk to other parts of the FAA about what their concerns are, what their questions are. We'll talk to the airport's office if the proposed spaceport is located at an existing airport to make sure that we're not impacting in a negative way the existing aviation activities. We also look at, at the airline routes. The air traffic organization has a good handle on where the traffic is and what times of day are the busiest. We want to make sure that if the commercial space transportation operations are authorized, then we're not negatively impacting other users of the airspace. So it may make sense for a Falcon 9 or an Atlas V to take off from Cape Canaveral, but you couldn't put that same type of an operation in a heavy, heavily populated area or near a major city. At the same time, some of these smaller reusable launch vehicle systems that are now being proposed for space tourism or other operations may fit in very nicely with existing airport structures. Each spaceport has their own types of vehicles that they anticipate hosting, and depending on whether you're talking vertical launch or horizontal launch and how large the rocket is, that can impose different kinds of requirements in terms of what the flight safety systems are like, whether you need to clear out folks who live nearby during a launch operation or impose other terms and conditions on the requirements. So if you look at the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport at Wallops, where orbital ATK has conducted their Antares launches, that's a significantly larger rocket than they've had in the past. But we were able to do the analysis to consider what would happen in the event of a problem during launch and conclude that it could be conducted without negatively impacting public safety. Now, as you know, we did have a recent mishap at Wallops, but uh, fortunately there were no public casualties and were able to uh, make the repairs in that location. Both the state of Virginia and Orbital came up with the necessary funding to get that operation back online and they hope to be flying again very soon. As I reflect on the COTS program and what we've learned from that, I think it makes an excellent example of a real win-win situation between government and industry and what is possible if we approach this in, in new and innovative ways. We don't have to be bound by the way we've always done things. We certainly want to ensure public safety. We want to make sure that NASA can successfully carry out its missions. But there's a lot of really smart people across the land, and if we can incorporate them in our planning, in our operations, then we can do great things as a nation in space.